So as we've talked about, Keynesian economic focuses on explaining recessions and depressions. I don't remember who said it, but somebody said, uh, you know, like we're like in times of trial and economic distress, we are all Keynesians now. Like we all become Keynesians when shit hits the fan, right? So like during COVID, everybody was a Keynesian. Everybody was fine with government, you know, spending money, right? Well, not everybody, but for the most part, right? Um, during the 2008 financial crisis, right? That was a bit more of a uniform kind of reaction where, you know, well, I don't know, there's still kind of some backlash in terms of the TARP program. So most people, most people become Keynesians in times of uh, economic distress, right? And so part of what Keynes focused on is policy prescriptions for minimizing the impact of the above. And so Keynes viewed recessions as based on two key building blocks. So two key reasons that recessions exist and persist. So the first is that aggregate demand is not always automatically high enough to provide firms with an incentive to hire enough workers to achieve full employment. and specifically to reach full employment, which as macroeconomists, we care about, right? But as a business owner, you're pretty much a microeconomist. You don't give a crap about full employment. You could care less. I mean, I guess it makes a difference when there's so much of a recession that all of us are depression that all of a sudden your consumer base is eroding because there's so many people that are getting fired that people don't have enough money to buy stuff, right? Um, but until then, you know, you, you, you have no incentive to align yourself with the broader macroeconomic goals of creating full employment. And the second reason that Keynes talked about a lot is how the macroeconomy, so part of what Keynes was kind of battling against and part of what you know Keynesian theory still has strong critiques of is from the libertarian neoclassical wing of the economics uh, uh, ideology, uh, which talks about how like things will adjust on their own, that if you just get out of the way, you know, there's a certain amount of creative destruction, like firms go belly up and they have to sell their assets for really cheap, but that allows new and budding entrepreneurs with new innovations and invention ideas to get a cheaper start on their next business. And so the destruction of one company becomes the loam, the fertile soil for another company, right? Um, so that's kind of the argument uh, that the neoclassicists persist with. Um, but the critique and what happened during the Great Depression, right, of 1929, that took most of the 1930s, um, the critique of it was, well, in the long run, we'll all be dead. Like if it's so severe enough that 25% of people are without jobs and like two thirds of financial portfolios were wiped out pretty much overnight, like we ended up in this negative spiral where more people got fired, which caused demand to decrease, which caused 
more companies to let more people go, which caused incomes to decrease, right? Like, so you, you can get stuck in this negative reinforcing kind of death spiral. And that's what Keynesian economic thought is trying to combat. So the second reason uh, that Keynes thought that recessions existed and persisted were because of a slowly adjusting macroeconomy He's not denying that the macro economy does adjust, right? But it's the fact that it's slow. And if it's severe enough in the long run, we'll, we'll be dead, right? So slowly adjusting macro, macro economy uh, because of essentially a sluggish aggregate demand curve. And the reason why we have a sluggish aggregate demand curve this thing called sticky wages and prices, which we'll talk about in a second. 